Hi, and uh, welcome to the second installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro, the COVID-19 version, um, which um, Shelby and I uh, started last week uh, in order to really inform you uh, as seniors living here in Westboro about what you need to know given the very difficult times that we are now all going through. Uh, as you know, if you've seen the show before, my uh, co-host on the show is Shelby Marshall, one of your wonderful Westboro selectmen. Uh, and the purpose of this show is to help you, as, as we're trying to help Frank and Mary, my friends who are trying to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard here in Westboro, uh, survive all of this. Uh, and Shelby, my, my role, as many, many of you know, is to provide the comic relief. Shelby's role is to provide the, 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 the guests and the substance. Shelby has another wonderful guest for us today. Shelby, who are we to whom are we speaking today? Yeah, good morning, Arthur. Um, thank you, and thanks to our viewers out there. I'm so excited that we have our Director of Youth and Family Services, Kara Presley, with us good, this morning. Good morning, Kara. Good morning. It's good to be here. Yes. And Kara, good. it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Excellent. So um, we're going to do this show in two segments. Uh, Kara's going to join us for a bit of it, and then we're going to kind of transition to maybe some other more general town content. Um, I'll give folks an update on kind of what's going on. We had a board of selectmen meeting jointly with the Board of Health last night. So I'll give folks just a quick update, and then Arthur will try to provide some comic relief and other, you know, pearls of wisdom. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Kara, thank you for joining us. So let's start with some of the basics as we would with any guests. So what's your role here in the town? And tell us a little bit about Youth and Family Services, please. Sure. I am the director of the town department known as Youth and Family Services. Uh, we have a mission at Youth and Family Services to provide counseling and social services to Westboro residents and to promote behavioral health and wellness for the entire community. And my role in that department is to provide counseling and clinical consultation, to supervise our other counselors and our administrative assistant, to help all staff provide resources and information to town residents, and to provide educational opportunities and um, activities and programs to help people connect and promote emotional and mental health wellness. Excellent, excellent. A lot of responsibility. Well, we're um, uh, Youth and Family Services has been in Westboro for how many years? How long have we had a department? I should know it, but I don't. It's okay, since 1984. Okay, all right. So lots of changes over those years as, you know, societal changes, needs a change of family, uh, changing demographics in our town. Um, so, uh, and Carrie, you've been on for over a year now, right? A year and a half now. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Time flies. Wow. Can I ask how do how do you how do you coordinate with the senior center folks? Because I know that that's 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 so you're doing a lot of things, right? And you're doing like youth and family. But obviously, one of the people pieces of uh, one group that's pretty stressed out right now are the, the seniors, right? The folks that I see kind of regularly, right? And I, I'm one of them. I'm I turned 70 in January, so I'm now an at-risk person, right? One of those people they may be telling to wear one of those N95 masks pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So how how do you how do you coordinate all that? Well, we work pretty closely with the senior center, both formally and informally. Um, we are formally involved in Westboro Cares, which is a subgroup of the larger Human Service Alliance. Our department facilitates those groups and it includes representatives from the Senior Center and the Westboro Cares, also includes folks from a couple of charitable organizations and St. Luke's Outreach. Um, and we work with the Senior Center also individually on a case-by-case -case basis to make referrals back and forth. We do, despite the word youth being at the top of our title, we do serve all ages and we consider a family any person residing in resident. Or and, and, we consider ourselves, and we consider ourselves to be pretty young, so that's good. So there that's you go. Good. Any and all ages. So we work closely with them both on individual cases and to do um, joint collaboration in the community. Thank, thank you. Great. So, um, I'll go into greater depth on this in the second half of our show, but uh, last night we received this amazing document. Can't read it here, but I'll read the top of it. It's uh, 
the Youth and Family Services COVID-19 resource list. So um, I've asked um, Kara to highlight a few components of this. This list is available on the town's website. Um, but the thing I want to stress to folks, and we certainly appreciate, is that some of our uh, listeners, viewers, uh, may not have access to the internet. We understand that. So I want to emphasize that you don't have to worry about jotting all this down. There are friendly, willing, helpful people uh, happy to take your phone call and get you to the resource that you need. And um, I'll say this number a couple times today, um, but Youth and Family Services phone number is 508 366-3090. And maybe our friends at Westboro TV can put a little banner on that um, um, at some point during the show. Um, so Kara, tell us a little bit about some of the resources. Um, let's start with food because it's probably one of my favorite subjects. Um, <laughs> folks right now having difficulty maybe getting out to get food. Um, financially, um, jobs have been impacted. Talk to us a little bit about what the Westboro Food Pantry is doing. There are a few sources of food, luckily, in town, I think, to make this a little bit easier for folks. Um, and the Westboro Food Pantry is still very much active in trying to make sure folks are fed. So, unfortunately, the doors to the Westboro Food Bank are closed, as are all town buildings. They're not open to the public. But the food pantry is still actively working to feed families. And they're doing that by mailing gift cards to any of the folks who have been patrons of the food pantry in recent months. Now, if you have not been a patron of the food pantry, you can still take advantage of this resource by calling the food pantry. You will likely reach a voicemail, but that voicemail is being checked and people are being called back on a daily basis. And you can talk to Phil or Donna and ask them to put you on the list of families to receive a gift card. And it's my understanding that those are being sent out on a monthly basis and likely to be sent out mid to late month. Great, thank you. And the food pantry number is 508-366-3007. So um, again, we have an amazing food pantry. They do things, they do provide amazing services um, on, on, if you will, good days. And, and they really have stepped up um, and um, um, my understanding is a local business recently donated $5,000 worth of uh, gift cards uh, to the food pantry to help out. So um, uh, pretty amazing stuff where, you know, folks are coming together to help. So, And I can um, say that they are accepting um, monetary donations and gift card donations on a regular basis. Um, the town clerk's office is open by appointment right now and if you happen to go into the town clerk's office you can take your donations there or you can mail the donated gift cards or monetary donations to the food pantry p.o box and perhaps i'll let you all list that yep. address as well Sure, and it's P.O. Box 502 if you wanted to make a donation in Westboro. Uh, so uh, our audience does extend to uh, younger families. Um, to, if you would share a little bit with folks if they're not already tapped into uh, the free breakfast and lunch programs that are continuing through our school system. There are free breakfast and lunch programs available to families who are eligible for free and reduced lunch during the regular school year. On every weekday in the mornings, lunches are available to pick up for families who are eligible from 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. at Hastings School and at the Westboro High School. And if you need delivery, delivery of those meals are also available. And in order to arrange that delivery, please call the principal of the school where your children or grandchildren attend. And um, we can provide to on the resource list that Shelby has been referencing, we do have a list of all the contact information for those principals. But I want to add that if you do not think that you're eligible for one of these programs, please don't let that get in the way of you seeking help. If you call our number, 508-366-3090, and talk to me or one of my colleagues, we will most likely be able to connect you with a resource to um, help you with food. Great. Excellent. 
Um, I think most of our seniors are well aware. It's been actually, I think, very well publicized about the uh, early senior uh, shopping hours. That's actually why we do this show at 11 o'clock. We're taping it because Arthur has to get out and do his shopping early in the morning. Right, Arthur? There are benefits. It seems that Arthur is frozen. Or Oh, Arthur, we can't hear you. Hold on. We have a technical glitch here. Okay. He's... He's going to get some assistance and, and we'll, we'll tease him while he's uh, away. Um, so, um, Kara, if you, you know, because we're, we're taping this, so the show must go on. So, Kara, can you talk to us a little bit about the kind of maybe some of the calls you're getting, if you will, again, obviously not, you know, you know, maintaining privacy and all. But what kind of um, are you seeing a, a trend in, in calls um, through the counseling and, and services um, sector of your, your uh, work? Um, since COVID has come around? Well, we certainly are seeing calls um, asking about things like food and monetary support. Um, and when people are stressed about meeting their basic needs, I think there's a bit of an echo. There's a little bit of an echo. Aiden, are you hearing that okay? Sorry. Okay. So, Brett, um, go ahead. I'm sorry, Kara. Keep talking. We'll work through it. Sure. Um, so we are getting calls of, of, of an assortment right now, but certainly we are getting calls about people's stress related to uh, worries about food and finances and such. And that then we know very well leads to a great amount of emotional distress as well. In addition to that, the clients that we have continued to serve providing phone-based services are talking to us about the strain um, on their own lives and the emotional distress that the COVID-19 pandemic and the shelter at home orders have been causing for them. And even in addition to the specific calls that we're getting, we're also hearing from our communities online and our networks throughout town that folks are just um, kind of reeling emotionally and psychologically, not really knowing how to handle this. Um, but we certainly are seeing um, a new kind of distress that seems to be rather universal. Right. Well, and I and I think, you know, I think what's important, you know, for our viewers to understand is, you know, certainly your mental health is in some ways as important as your physical health, right? And, you know, feelings of uncertainty and fear and hopelessness and frustration and anger are all sort of natural um, outgrowths, if you will, of what we're all facing. So I think it's, and it's important that we're able to talk about that. Um, can you maybe give um, us a couple minutes of, uh, you know, thoughts on, you know, some simple coping skills for our, uh, for those that are feeling really isolated, particularly our seniors? Well, I want to reinforce that having a whole range of emotions and distress is very normal at a time like this. Um, we are all experiencing a community level trauma. And when our brain doesn't know if they're going to be safe and doesn't know what's going to be, ha be happening, it responds in a way that causes us to have all kinds of changes to our mood and our physiology. It would be very normal for folks to be experiencing high moods and low moods. I wouldn't be surprised if people are feeling more exhausted than usual, even if you are sleeping plenty. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if you're finding yourself more short tempered, um, easily startled, or really kind of numbing out or feeling a little bit of nothing. All of those are normal responses to a traumatic experience, which is what we're having. So the best ways to cope with that are to do a few things. Focus first on your physical well-being. Make sure that you are eating healthfully and regularly. Don't skip meals. Be sure that you are getting an adequate amount of sleep. If you feel like taking naps, go ahead and take a nap. Now, that doesn't mean to sleep all day or to not get out of bed. I also think that a very healthy thing to promote our mental health and our emotional well-being is to create some routine in our lives. Um, this does not mean that you need to stick on a rigid schedule. In fact, I hope that you are giving yourself leeway to be flexible and do what you need to do to take care of yourselves and your families, but also making sure that you have time each day to um, move your body physically and to have scheduled meal times. Be sure that you are connecting socially to people. I, I heard that we 
uh, uh, that now instead of calling it social distancing, we should call it physical distancing mm -hmm. because we want to encourage people like to that. socialize. We don't want to discourage socialization. So pick up the phone and call your neighbor, call a relative, um, use these new technologies if you have them to connect to people and see their faces. But I really encourage you to keep up with some normal routines and connections to people as much as possible. Great. Thank that's, you. That's a wonderful, that's a wonderful summary of, of, okay. of just so much stuff. Because I don't think there's you're absolutely, as Shelby has said, we're just all so stressed. We don't know exactly why we're stressed. And our tendency is to think that it's something wrong with us. Yes. Right? Like why am I so, you know, as if nobody else is stressed. But everyone that I talk to right now always seems, you know, just a little off. You know, mm -hmm. because because they're preoccupied. Everyone's just so preoccupied. Yeah. And, yeah. and and the one and, and the, the wonderfulness of your suggestion about just getting out and just calling somebody, just calling anybody, just so that they can hear a voice. That's wonderful. That's really Absolutely. wonderful. Absolutely. And I you know, I think I think giving back is also a way. I know that again, I love the idea of physical distancing versus social. So I'm gonna start using that. Thank you. Um, but you know, neighbors checking on neighbors, I mean even, you know, if you're, regardless of your age, it doesn't matter, you don't have to have a senior living next to you, you know, take a little note, jot it down, hey, I'm thinking about you, here's my phone number, if you need anything, call us, I'm happy to run an errand for you. Um, I mean, those sort of things, first of all, it makes you feel like purposeful and good. And, you know, that person next to you might be like, oh my God, someone knows I'm alive here even though like I'm in my four walls and I'm not, I'm not comfortable in going outside. And I think that's the other thing that people have to recognize. I know we're physical distancing and we're limiting, you know, our mobility and where we're going um, in town, but recognize that some people just might not be comfortable in leaving their home and that's okay. And we just need to, you know, engage with those folks as best as we can. So. Absolutely. And I want to offer, um, as I know we need to wrap up this segment, but I want to offer for any of you who don't know who to call or don't have someone to call or just want an additional voice, please mm -hmm. feel free to call us. Um, we are here to provide support over the phone in whatever form that might take and to connect you with resources. So please don't hesitate to call us at 508-366-3090 and we'd be happy to talk. And one of the reasons why we wanted you on was just so that people could see your face. Right. Because you look like a very, very happy person. We'd love to call you. Right? So, Please really do. Wonderful. I'd be happy to talk. Excellent. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to um, say goodbye to Kara, but Kara, you're welcome to stay on if you'd like. I know you probably have other business to tend to. And um, when Aiden gives us the cue, we'll sort of switch to our next segment. All right. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, Kara. You. Okay, uh, so welcome back, Arthur. Uh, what a great guest she was, huh? Uh, Kara's terrific. awesome. Just terrific. Uh, so I wanted to give the community a, a quick update. Um, uh, the Board of Selectmen and Board of Health are now hosting uh, weekly joint meetings. Those are available, of course, through Westboro TV streaming or through cable channels. Um, but uh, just give a quick update of some of the highlights of our meeting last night. Um, first of all, I do want to update the community that as of March 31st, uh, we do have uh, 14 cases of COVID positive in our community. Um, 10 of those are confirmed and currently in quarantine or isolation and four have been removed from quarantine or isolation. 10 are male, nine are female, and they're distributed across a whole range of ages. All of this information is available through our town's website right at the top, uh, uh, COVID-19, and there's a whole list of resources, including these reports coming up from the Board of Health. One of the exciting things I thought that came out of our meeting last night is that our town manager um, is forming a task force um, for the purpose of identifying Westboro residents that whose needs are resulting from COVID-19 and to, community to create a community response for those needs. So we touched on this a little bit with uh, Kara, but it's um, we're, we're, the task force will be made up of municipal uh, departments like Youth and Family Services, the Senior Center, uh, two selectmen, um, public schools, the Westboro Cares Group that uh, Kara mentioned, uh, Interfaith, um, 
uh, the interfaith clergy group, and for the purpose of identifying, are we meeting the, what are the needs, who are the volunteers that can help, and kind of where are our gaps? And it's not to recreate the wheel. There are a lot of groups already out there doing great work. Um, so, for example, in your shoes, St. Luke's Outreach, they're already doing great things. It's to really make sure that they're plugged in and we're plugged in as a town and to, and we have an amazing talent of folks in, in Westboro and who have said, let me know how I can help, maybe I can organize, what have you. So it's really about pooling those resources. So very excited um, that uh, the selectmen are supportive of that uh, effort. And um, I'm actually one of the selectmen, uh, myself and Lee Emery will be on that. Uh, so more to come as, as we uh, do these shows. Um, and I think it's important I think this task force is particularly important as we get into this next phase of normal, unfortunately, to make sure that we're identifying what all those needs are um, and and connecting folks uh, uh, to resources that are there or identifying that we need new resources. So are you, from, from, from your perspective, what would you think would, from the people that you've heard from, you know, for people that you're talking to now, are there any, you know, real kind of just kind of unexpected needs that you're that you you're saying to yourself, well, wow, these are we're we're really focusing on some of the medical pieces, but these are things we haven't been thinking about. I'm just wondering. Um, I mean, at this time, no, because I think our town's response has been uh, amazing. Um, I think that I mean, even to the point where our senior center buses are still offering transportation, um, maintaining physical distancing to those that you know don't have transportation. As oh, this right. becomes protracted, um, you know, I think it's a real question of like, how do we continue to support um, families? I mean, as you know, as um, you know, as an employer, you know, if if you're depending, if you're an employer, you're employed, and you're living here in Westboro, and as your job changes, as you may lose your job or your savings start to dry up, it's a question of like. What we, you know, those are going to be no more people that are going to be raising their hand to say, I need some help. So I think that as this becomes more protracted, that's what this task force really needs to anticipate. What are the needs now? Are we okay? But what do we need to, uh, what do we need to address going forward? And I suppose that's the real challenge, just as, we, we, you know, to some extent, we feel like for, for various reasons, the COVID kind of caught us by a lot of folks by surprise. Well, we, right. I, that's great that you're really trying to plan ahead because you're realizing this other, you can now start kind of imagining what that world is going to be like after this bump, right? Right. But it's well, not going to be the old normal. It's just not going to be the old normal, right? right. So the question is, what what is that new normal really going to feel like? Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I was having a conversation. My mother-in-law lives downstairs, as I think you know, and I was talking to her about, you know, her going out shopping and the importance of her um, being able to um, when she goes out she's really got to prepare for what does she need to do and like I mean she might have access to gloves and a mask if that's what she felt like she wanted to wear out but a lot of people don't so you know is that something that as a community I know that they're you know they're scarce right now but should we be providing those with folks so that they can continue to feel productive and, and do their errands and that sort of thing. I, I don't know, it's a, it's a simple example, but, you know, even just walking her through, you know, okay, you gotta get gas, you should, you know, have something on your hand. I mean, these are just things that I think sometimes people may or may not be uh, uh, comfortable with. They might not have the supplies, the access to do it. So, it, you know, I, I think it's just something that we need to do. I think one of the great things that, um, that uh, we learned last night is that the senior tax write-off program, which has been had been uh, temporarily suspended because of all this, we've actually our finance director said let's turn that back on. So those seniors are now going to be part of the outbound call circuit that um, this to contact those on the senior centers list um, to make those social outreach calls. So it's a great way folks are getting that tax benefit and and um, folks are are having that um, uh, social engagement and so i guess that that leads to the, the 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 related question which is for so many seniors who are 
feeling they've got time and really want to help, you know, where, 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 where can they, where can folks plug in? Because I think you've got so many people, you know, obviously you're the biggest thing, as I think you correctly emphasize, the biggest thing is to look down your street and find that person next door or down the street that you kind of didn't know a lot about, but just to plug in with that person. But, but right. more broadly, is there, a, is there a kind of a natural place for people to be going who are really trying to figure this out but it, sure. during, this, during this, the present abnormal yeah. time and then during the new normal time, which is really not going to look like the old normal time? Right, you know? right. Well, I think the Senior Center has been maintaining a, a long list of volunteers of people that are at the ready. Um, so uh, if folks are interested in volunteering, you have a particular skill, uh, you have an area of interest, um, you can absolutely contact the uh, Senior Center. And um, um, uh, for folks that need that phone number, it's 508-366-3000. Um, let them know you're willing to volunteer. I think that's the challenge and a little bit of frustration that I'm hearing from the community is like, I'm ready to help. I feel like I can do that in a safe way, but no one's calling me. And so that's really what this task force, um, you know, really needs to sort of aggregate and collect and then figure out how to do, you know, to to do that um, so that we don't have folks kind of, you know, there's nothing worse, you know, sort of than saying, well, I offered help, but no one called me. Right. I mean, no one. Right. But, the, but, but once again, from a from a from a broader from a kind of a I don't want to say an optimistic perspective, but from a one perspective, this may actually end up being something that actually puts Westboro even into a better place at the end yes. of the day. Yeah. Because as a result of this, you have people thinking about their community in a different way and saying that that for this into this new for this new normal period, that new normal has to be even more connected than Westboro Connects has been connecting people. You know, right. that, that it, it 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 really kind of takes it to another level. So yeah. it, you know you could be saying well, I remember there was there's there's a there's a line that the Jesuits always use. You know, there are no coincidences, right? There are no coincidences. You know, the, so to be saying this is this is kind of the the, the this miserable time, but this is also maybe the generating yeah. of a kind of a new society, right? Yeah. And a society that's very community based. You know. So Arthur, we already have our. Um, I'm going to just quickly transition in the interest of time. You're absolutely right. We'll have more updates coming on the task force. One See, people the, are just calling you to sign up right no, now. Sorry. They just they keep calling. Sorry. <laughs> it's great. Um, but uh, our next guest is going to talk about something very near and dear to many folks' heart. We're actually going to have a veterinarian on uh, who is a resident to talk about pets and what they're feeling during this time and maintaining their health and your sanity. So uh, special guest next time. And so it's not just elderly pets. It's like yeah. pets of any age. <laughs> right. Pets, pets and, of, yeah. And any any great. species. That's great. So Shelby, thanks a million. Thanks a million to the folks at Westboro Cable for being willing to do this. We hope that this is providing uh, you with some you know great information and and a, quite, answers to some of your questions. So once again, folks, I hope that you're finding these um, uh, useful during this really difficult time. Uh, we will look forward to seeing you on the next installment of uh, Frank and Mary uh, here in Westboro, the COVID-19 version. Thanks very much for joining us. Great to see you, Arthur. Take care. Bye-bye.